everyone, it's Erica. Welcome back to Maniacal Reader. Today I'm doing my March wrap up. I read eight books in the month of March, so let's get started. The first book I read in March was Like a Memory by Abby Glines. This is the first book in a new adult romance series, and it follows the children of the Rosemary Beach series and the children of the Sea Breeze series. So with this new series, both series meet and this series is about the new generation of kids. This first book follows a girl named Bliss York and her romance with a guy named Nate Finlay. Bliss York is the eldest daughter of Cage and Eva York that we met in the Seabreeze series, and Nate Finlay is the son of Rush and Blair Finlay from the Rosemary Beach series. I read this book on my Kindle, and I gave this book 3 out of 5 stars. It was a good book, but it was middle of the road for me. It provided a good foundation to the series, but I hope other books in the series are better than this first one. Nate Finlay is a lot like his father in appearance, but he does have a softer side to him that is a lot like Blair. Bliss is a lot different from Nate. She survived cancer in her teen years, and her family has been through a lot. Now that she's overcome the that ordeal, she's ready to live life to the fullest. Nate and Bliss met a few years ago, one summer, just before she had cancer, and they spent a good summer together. But now, in present day, they come across each other once again. Bliss has taken a job at Nate Fiance's fashion store, and Nate is spending the summer her in Seabreeze, away from his family to get a break from them. At the start of the book, each of them pretend that they don't remember the other person. But eventually, this tends to wear down. Nate feels like he got his heart broken by Bliss. But because of Bliss's fight with cancer, she just chose to shut him out altogether. She wanted to preserve the memory that they had together before her big ordeal with cancer. As the book moves on, Nate and Bliss realize that they have feelings for each other. But Nate is scared to feel too much because he's afraid that he'll get his heart broken again. But Bliss really wants a relationship with him, even though he's holding her at arm's length. But he's not sure how to juggle his relationship with Octavia, someone that he is in a relationship with purely for status. They don't really have a meaningful relationship and their relationship is mainly sexual. So Nate is aside himself and he's just trying to uh, figure things out. He's not really sure what the best move is. I did find that the relationship between Bliss and Nate was sweet, but it wasn't anything that I hadn't encountered before with an Abby Glines book, so it wasn't anything new. I did enjoy the twists in this book, particularly regarding Nate's relationship with Octavia. I did also like the family aspect in this book. We did get to see older characters from the Rosemary Beach series. Bliss also has a best friend named Eli. Eli is the son of Marcus and Willow from the Seabreeze series. Even though Bliss and Eli are best friends, Eli has always loved Bliss, but she doesn't feel the same way. So when Nate comes back into her life, Eli is very guarded and is not sure what to make of her relationship with Nate. So there was also that conflict in the book, and it was interesting to see Eli and Nate's interactions with each other. I loved all of their relationship and family dynamics in this book. I think this is going to be a really interesting series. But this first book didn't wow me, like most of Abby's other books. The next book I read in March was Addicted to You by Christian Becker Ritchie. This is the first book in a new adult romance series, and I'm actually rereading this series with Carol over at the Reading Wallflower. I've talked about this series many times on my channel, so I won't go into too much detail about these books. But this first book follows Lily and Lowe's story. Lily is addicted to sex, while Lowe is addicted to booze. These two characters have been best friends all of their lives, but when they get to college, they decide to live together and pretend to be in a romantic relationship in order to hide their addictions from their families. 
I did like this first book. I gave it 4 out of 5 stars. I really like the connection in between Lily and Lo. It is genuine, even though they are both in the throes of their addictions. The next book I read in March was Ricochet. This is the second book in the Addicted series. This book centers a lot around Lily. Now that Lo has gone to rehab, Lily is forced to stay celibate for 90 days while he's in rehab. This book focuses a lot on her struggles and the next steps that she needs to take in order to take charge of her addiction and not let it control her. The only complaint that I do have about this book is that I would have wanted to know more about Lo and his experience in rehab. However, we did get more of Lily and Lo's relationship in the past before they entered college, so it was nice to see some of that history and how they interacted with each other before they decided to confront their addictions. The next book I read was Addicted for Now. This is the third book in the Addicted series. This is the book that really gets to explore who all of these characters are, including some of the side characters. Now that Lo has returned from rehab, Lily and Lo have to find out a new dynamic in their relationship. Lo is really strong for Lily in this book, and I really appreciated that. You can tell that he really loves her, and he'll do anything he can to help her stay healthy. The other reasons why I like this book is because this is the first book where the reader gets to really understand all of these characters deeply, and this book really touches on all of the family dynamics that these characters have in the series. On top of Lily and Lo trying to find new ground in their relationship, there's a mysterious stalker that keeps texting Lily and Lo, and this stalker is threatening to make Lily's sex addiction public. So all throughout the book, Lily and Lo are trying to find out who this stalker is. The next book I read was Kiss the Sky. This is the fourth book in the Addicted series, and it's actually the first book in the Callaway Sisters series, which is the spin-off inside of the Addicted series that talks about the other couples in this series. This book follows Rose and Connor's points of view. I gave this book four out of five stars. I really liked this book, and I do like Rose and Connor her together. I feel that they're a good match for each other, and I do like the the discussions that they have with each other and the little games that they play with each other. I do love their dynamic and even some of the verbal whole foreplay as well as some of the physical foreplay. But their actual sex life isn't for me. It's not something I find appealing, but I do like the rest of their dynamic. This book follows the gang now that Lily's sex addiction has become public. All of the characters have to deal with that and the repercussions of that. Rose's fashion line is failing, so in order to boost up sales and the reputation of Callaway Couture, her fashion line, Rose decides to have a reality TV show, but there are twists and turns along the way, and the reality show is a struggle for all of them. And I did like it as much as the first time. Rose and Connor are definitely a treat to spend time with. The next book I read was Anything You Can Do by R.S. Gray. This is a new adult romance standalone, and it follows these two characters named Daisy Bell and Lucas Thatcher. Daisy and Lucas have had a rivalry all of their lives. Daisy and Lucas have returned to their hometown of Hamilton, Texas. Daisy wants to take over the family he practice for herself, so it's a surprise when one of the head doctors tells her that Luke is will be sharing the job with her. Now, Daisy and Lucas are competitors in the workplace, and Luke is wants to try new tactics, sexual warfare against Daisy. And Daisy is not giving in that easily. She'll do anything to boot Luke is out of the family clinic. Daisy realizes that she does have a sexual connection into Lucas that she likes. What she doesn't know is that Luke is, has loved her all of their lives, and their rivalry is much more than a game to him, since he has true feelings for Daisy. I liked the dynamic between
between these two characters in the book, you can feel tension in their relationship all throughout the book. And I did like the twists in this book. It did keep things exciting. I also loved the natural conclusion into this book. Lucas has never said that he has had feelings for Daisy. He's kept them to himself for all these years. This book was definitely interesting. I've never read a relationship quite like this where the characters are enemies but then they fall in love with each other. It was definitely a fun book to read and I could see myself reading more books like this. This was the first R.S. Gray book I read and I really liked it a lot. I gave it 4 out of 5 stars. I can definitely see myself collecting and reading all of her other books. I think she's an author that I'm really going to like. The next book I read was Hot House Flower. This is the next book in the Addicted series and this book follows Daisy and Reich's romance. In the past books there have been suspicions that Daisy has a crush on Reich and that Reich may have feelings for her too. But this is the first book where that relationship comes to fruition. I gave this book 5 out of 5 stars. I really like their relationship and you can tell that Reich really loves her and has had feelings for her all along. I did like the conflicts in this book. Reich isn't sure what other people will think of his relationship with Daisy and he's really unsure of if Lo will accept his relationship with Daisy. I did like this book just as much as the first time around. It is really an amazing book. And the last book I read this month was Thry. This is the next book in the Addicted series and it follows Lily and Lowe's points of view, covering the events that were in Kiss the Sky and Hot House Flower, but from their point of view. I really did like this book. I gave it 4 out of 5 stars. This book primarily focused on Lowe's addiction. He's really struggling with his addiction because of different rumors that are flying around about him and his dad and he's just trying to deal with all of that the best way he knows how. I really liked Reich and Connor's support of him in this book. They are really there for him when he needs them most. There's a lot of tension between Reich and this book because of Reich's relationship with Daisy and the fact that Lo feels that Reich won't be honest with him. So his connection with Reich is a little off in this book. I also enjoyed seeing some other scenes that weren't fully featured in Kiss the Sky and Hot House Flower, so it was good to see those scenes as well. Those are all of the books that I read in March. You can comment down below and tell me what books you read this month. Was it a good reading month for you? Were you disappointed by books that you read this month? Let me know. Now let's move on to the books that I want to read in April. The first book I want to read in April is actually one that I've already started, and that is Addicted After All. This is the next book in the Addicted series, and it's actually the conclusion of Lily and Lowe's story. The next book I want to read is Fuel the Fire, and this book follows Rose and Connor's points of view, and this book concludes their story in the series. The next book that I want to read is Long Way Down. This is the second last book in the Addicted series, but it actually concludes the Addicted series. This book features Reich and Daisy's romance. The next book I want to read is Some Kind of Perfect. This is the final book in the Addicted series, and this is actually the epilogue novel. At the end of Long Way Down, there's an epilogue that jumps forward in time, nine or ten years, and this epilogue novel talks about what happened to the characters within that nine or ten year jump. So that's where this novel comes in. This novel also features the kids that the characters from the Addicted series have, and the parents' interactions with them. That's what I liked about this book. I liked seeing all the kids that the Addicted characters have, and this book is actually a lead-in for the spin-off series, Damaged Like Us. Also, this book is told from all six points of view, from all three couples in the series. The next book I want to read after the Addicted series is Linked by Imogene Housen. This is the first book in a YA sci-fi duology. I've talked about this book a couple of times on my channel. This book follows a girl named Alyssa who is struggling with terrifying visions. She has phantom pains and bruises and she doesn't know where these visions or pains or bruises are coming from. Alyssa is promised a cure, a surgery that can burn out 
the overactive area in her brain. But on the eve of this surgery, she realizes that she's actually seeing the world through someone else's eyes. Her twin sister, who she never knew existed. Now Alyssa and her twin sister Lynn are on the run from the government because the government thinks that Alyssa and her sister are hiding some big secret. It sounds like this book is definitely going to be interesting and one that I want to get to ASAP. The next book that I want to get to is Unravel, the second book in this duology. I don't know if I'll have time to read anything else in April since the last few books in the Addicted series are monsters, but if I have time, I would like to get to Percy Jackson and the Olympians by Rick Riordan. This is the first book in a middle grade fantasy series. Nearly everyone I watch on booktube talks about this series, and I hear great things about Rick Riordan. So this is the series that really started it all for Rick Riordan. I've been wanting to read this series for a few years. I wanted to get into more fantasy this year, so this seems like a good place to start. I haven't decided if I'm reading this book, or if I want to get to Shadow and Bone by Lee Bardugo. These are two series that I definitely want to get to soon, but I haven't made up my mind as to which one I want to read. They both sound like such terrific series. I'll have to see what I'm in the mood for. Those are all of the books that I want to read in April. I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye!